morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel L. Conan. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Monday morning turnaround happening. The futures were down last night, but Europe opens up and the European banks start rallying, and all of a sudden the futures are up five points. Barron's gives Goldman Sachs some love. Some of the other financials are following suit here this morning. And we're going to look at the technicals and some of your S&P's top components. Joel, how was the weekend? Tigers are up three with three to play. Not bad. They clinched the tie. This need now their magic numbers down to one. One Chicago White Sox loss or one Tigers victory. We'll get the Tigers into the postseason. And uh, Michigan didn't play, so they, they didn't have a loss, so I'm glad about that. But uh, looking at the charts over the weekend, I, my question for you is this uh, 1420 handle, uh, the high 1420s, 1427, 1429, is that the new 1390 handle? Is that just going to be like support? We're just going to bounce off there in weeks and consolidate, just blast off again? Well, we bounced off there overnight, getting as low as 1427.75. So we were actually we're down seven, almost six and a half points there at one point last night. And uh, we've just rallied here. Since Europe's opened, we've been straight up. We're up at 1439, have got as high as 1442. So really, the overnight range has encompassed most of the last four day to, or days of range here. Like you said, 1425 area, we've had support. And 1445 area, we've had resistance. So this little move here overnight has ran almost the entire range. Yeah, someone woke up at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning with their buying shoes on because we had a five-point spike in the S&Ps at that time. Uh, keeping an eye on the upside, 1444 and a half. Uh, that was Thursday's high. We couldn't quite get there uh, during Friday's blowback session. Uh, that's major resistance there. I think uh, we break through that level, and I think we're going back up to new highs. Uh, as long as we stay below that 1444.50, I just look for us to chop around in the 1430 handle. Yeah, it's definitely not a lot of air. You can see that with the vicious move even overnight. There's just not a lot of reference points in the 1430s. Again, the 1420s, you find support. You get into the 1440s, you find resistance. And you find a lot of air in the 1430s. So I guess that's how you're going to have to play it maybe. If we start to break above that 1445, I'd get nervous from the short side. Uh, Apple had an interesting day on Friday. It was actually it's opened up not that bad, but then just caved. Continued down most of the day and closed right on the lows. Is rallying three bucks with the overall market here this morning, but what's your take here on Apple? Um, I think some people were locking in some profits there for the end of the quarter. I mean, if you had that stock and uh, been owning it for a long time, like supposedly money, many of these fund managers are, uh, if you want to book a few profits, uh, that would be the stock to do it. Uh, it's really racing around between 660 and 700. Uh, this 660 level is just major support. Uh, that sits above the, the lows made on iPhone announcement day. So critical support for that stock as long as we're holding that 656 to 660 level. Things are still good to go north on the upside. Uh, and then looking at the double top from Thursday and Friday, uh, people stepped in in the 681 handle, 681.11 and 682.17. So until we break above that, uh, still have a chance to go down. Did make me nervous, though, because you can't love the relative strength in Apple on Friday. It did look relatively weak, but you got to keep in mind it was the end of the quarter. There's always is funny things happening in stocks at the end of the quarter. Like, check out the IBM with the market overall weak. IBM was just strong like crazy on Friday. Yeah, I was looking at that on the weekly outlook, and there was no – really, you can't slough it off with low volume. Uh, it was just a, a, a big move. It busted through the t double top we had at 208 from uh, the middle of September. Uh, came back and closed under that level. But uh, if you look at IBM here, it's going back uh, – I don't know, I'd say at least a couple weeks here. Uh, you've been pretty range-bound. Can't break much below uh, 204. And uh, this was the first real major attempt to break above 208. But we break above and hold 208. And uh, we got our eyes on the old-time high here at 210.69. 
we got an acquisition here this morning. 3M is buying us, uh, what's this, Ser- Serendine? C-R-D-N, yep. I think that's how you say it, Serendine. Small little company. They're paying cash for the company, 35 bucks a share. So C-R-D-N shareholders are excited there because it closed at 24.43. It's trading right under the takeover price at 34.89. 3M, uh, this is a small acquisition for them, so actually I haven't even seen a trade this morning in 3M yet. But let's do a technical on 3m here joel this might be one of the easiest technicals to do ever in the history of the world <laughs> look at this nine look at this 94 dollar level yeah 94 is huge yeah i mean that's put the cap on uh, rallies here going back to the middle of september i uh, have a high uh recent high of the move at 94 30 someone is just stepping in here i don't know if you recognize any size a little in the bit book. of 94 uh, it's a really yeah. noticeable level it's not huge but there's some size up there yeah i would just uh keep an eye on that no one really seems to care about this merger here uh in the pre-market you did get a little dip uh 3m uh, you know, after the announcement, but uh, really nothing, nothing yeah. to mention. It's a small acquisition for 3M, so that's not really that surprising that the stock isn't responding much. But good for CRDN, and nice to see a little merger there. Want to talk about Goldman Sachs here, Joel? Barron's giving them some love over the weekend, saying the stock could rally 25% from these levels. Uh, 113.68 is where it closes, trading up over 116 right now, 116.17 in the pre-market. So Goldman Sachs responding well to that Barron's love. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to note if you're a trader or or, a longer-term investor, I mean, you can't ignore the Barron's effect. Uh, You saw what it did to Facebook last week uh, for the first couple days, uh, but then when uh, the dust settles and everything and you have to take a look at your own analysis and your own technicals, you know, then make a decision. Because basically what Barron's did last week was get you an opportunity to buy Facebook you know, much cheaper than it had been trading at over the previous two weeks. Uh, now here with Goldman, this thing has had a really a nice run in the market uh, off these lows that it had uh, back during this, um, June. We hit 90.71, had a monster rally, topped out at 122.60. You got a little bit of a pullback. It looks like it was going to come back and maybe do a, a 50 percenter. And now this Barron's article is uh, shook things up a little bit. Um, looking at the pre-market activity, you did get a high at 116.40, so that's only minor resistance here. Uh, when you go to the charts, uh, you had a double top at 117.43 and 117.65. So if the rally continues here in Goldman, I would look for resistance at that level. Uh, longer term, I mean, this stock is, uh, has been a pig. It really has. I mean, it uh, got caught up in the financial crisis and came down what it trade 45 bucks or yeah, whatever 47 it, it, i think it got to in 2008 47 41 and obviously rallied like crazy in the next year getting a ridiculous high up there in the 190s before obviously the second round of selling pressure in the last couple of years has taken it back down but it has formed that nice bottom there like you were pointing out almost call that a triple bottom in the whole 90 to 91 area and rallied significantly from there so it's a pullback uh the 50 percent kind of almost a 50 percent of the latest move from the move um, from early in september when we were just mm-hmm. around 107 so I could argue the Barron's point here. If you think financials are getting strong, I think Goldman could be the one that leads you the way out. It's just a matter of whether you have that same opinion that the financials can continue to show some strength. Can you can you pull up a monthly there? Because I think I'll let you draw a trend line in. On a monthly? Where are you drawing this trend line? A weekly? Uh, like you got this top here. Uh, you got this top going back to... Uh, January of 2011 at 175.34, you connect that top, uh, the next top coming down at 164, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm stretching here, it's top at 128.72. I I see where you're looking here, he's looking at this trend line here, he's trying to draw this one right here. Just, just I, I could draw to... it there. There is a trend line there. I mean, it's fun. That's the fun thing with technical analysis. You can pretty much show trend lines and <laughs> oh find them God, all over the place. So, so he's saying that 120 area still could be the top of the trend and provide you some resistance. Correct, Joel? 
<laughs> and if not, it's going to 140. It's going to 140. It's above this 120 with some conviction. Joel's getting bullish, and it's going to 140. Maybe a couple <laughs> prints. Maybe a print at 130 <laughs> and a, a print at 139.99. <laughs> Morgan Stanley here up a little bit this morning as well. Up trading up 15 cents at 16.89. Uh, same. These charts all look the same. They've had the big run in early September. They pulled back in the last week and a half, and now they've consolidated a little bit here, and they're getting a little lift this morning, just in sympathy with the Goldman move. You can look even stocks like Bank America. They all kind of look the same. J.P. Morgan, not exactly the same, but similar. We had the move. You've kind of pulled back 50% from that move. So interesting enough. A lot of these financials are actually starting to form a little bit of a base off the 50% retracement on the latest move. Yeah, I just want to point out to traders here in uh, the for you Morgan Stanley traders had a double top 1695 to 1697. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any size associated in the book with uh, this move up at 17. Uh, but you break above 17 here, you might have a little stopping point at 17 and a quarter. Uh, but you just may be looking at uh, the well, the high of the move is way up there at 1850. But uh, I feel good about uh, this Morgan Stanley if it broke above 17. Citigroup getting a downgrade today, but still trading up. Stern AG downing, downgrading the stock, but stock is trading up 3296 after closing 3272. So same type of chart here again. We had the big move up from 30 up to just under 36 at 35 and a quarter pulled back 32 now it's getting a little bit of a lift found a bottom and almost uh, trying to take out that 33 handle uh, i'd have 34 on my targets if it really started to uh move up there's some major resistance up there at 34 but i think goldman's going to be your leader keep an eye on that one there today yeah we haven't even reached uh friday's high here in the city group so i would uh i'd keep an eye on that level uh 33 12 uh, be some resistance. Uh, you had another high at 33.33. So running into a couple of resistance level. After that, it looks like it opens up to 34. The downgrade might hold that stock down a little bit relative to the other ones as well. Uh, let's take a look at the action in Microsoft. If you want to talk about poor relative strength, it's Microsoft. Every time the market rallies, Microsoft ignores it. Every time the market sells off, Microsoft sells off. So, and here we are, markets rallied six points, Microsoft's down six cents again. Did get a downgrade today from RBC Capital, that's what's knocking the stock down. But I mean, the stock does not look pretty. You had this nice uptrend going from early in July. That got, <clears throat> that got broke when it broke through about 30.75, just five trading sessions ago. Has given back a dollar since that point. I don't know, I think this stock just continues to look like a dog. What have they done new? That's what I'm I mean, saying, too. I agree with that. What have yeah. they done new lately? I mean, yeah. even even look at Apple. Like, Microsoft's eating their lunch, too. They make the windows for PC. PCs are just in shambles. You know, look at Hewlett Packard this morning getting negative comments at UBS there again was trading down. I think it's up a nickel now. But it's hard. It's hard to say. You know, and Microsoft needs to definitely reinvent themselves here, too, and find another product. They need another product. Yeah, look at this. I mean, you do have this low at 29.48 that uh, may stump the bleeding uh, for a little bit. Uh, but in fact, if it doesn't hold this 29.48 level, um, you're looking at 29 bucks. Uh, but as we talked about in the past uh, for the stock like Microsoft, um, it will give you some consolidation and a double or triple top or something like that to, uh, you know, to give you a focus point uh, to trade off. But as of right now, uh, do not see any double bottoms in place in Microsoft. It's a great point you're making there, especially to the swing traders out there. Microsoft will often give you one, two, three, four chances at a level. So if it comes down to 29 bottoms and spikes to 29.50, it will often come and retest that 29 before just continuing higher. Very rarely do you see Microsoft make this V bottom without actually retesting those lows. So why sit out there and pick a bottom uh, for you? And when I'm talking for you swing traders, I'm not talking in day scalpers but the guys that are actually looking you know for them to make a dollar or two on it why pick a bottom when a stock usually gives you two or three chances at that level wait till it puts in a bottom wait till it puts in a double bottom and then maybe you know you try you know you try along at that point in time okay just to finish up on a couple of the big 10 
Uh, GE just on a tear here. Uh, has some size to contend with at 23, though, right? Yeah, there's been a institutional, some institutional selling pressure up there at 23. Uh, the high-frequency traders were all over it on Friday. It got up into the 2296 area, and they turned around and sold the stock off almost immediately when it got into the 2290s. And then it consolidated all day, just hanging out in the 2270s. Is trading up a little bit here. It does have that size to contend with, though, so I'd expect high-frequency trading up there. Again, in the 2290s, giving you resistance. Gets above 23, all those HFTs will hit the cover button, though. Okay, J, uh, Johnson & Johnson, J&J, look at all these crazy closes around 69. I mean, uh, several of the last closes, 6891, 6901, 69. Uh, major consolidation here. I think if it uh, can hold 69 this morning, it might sneak up back, uh, try and test that multi-year high, 69.75. Um, on the downside, uh, 69, it looks like you're heading to take out Friday's low. You're going to 68. It needs to get above 69. I've drawn a trend line there. That trend appears to be broken from Friday's action when the stock got down to 68.50. Did close strong up at 68.91, but I think 69 is the big number to contend with here. Needs to get above there, hold there, and start to march higher because otherwise it starts to trade below here again. It could. It looks like that trend's broken to me, so I, it's scary from the long perspective on that one. Okay, and uh, to close out the show, the chart of the day, Wells Fargo. Look at this, Dennis. Triple top, 34.80 to 34.86. The last three sessions, uh, you're coming up three higher low, or excuse me, two higher lows here after getting near that $34 level. Not quite uh, close enough to to get a decent uh, decent risk reward ratio. Got the 34.29, but things really open up after this uh, this 34.86 level. Yeah, if it can get above this 34.86 level, we had the huge run down there from I think it was Tuesday where we went from 35.60 all the way down to, thir or maybe it was Wednesday, 35.60 all the way down to 34, 35. Ridiculous move down there in a day and a half. Uh, the stock did find support in the 34.30s. So if it can get above the 34.80 area, yeah, maybe you could play it long. But Wells Fargo's beta is usually less than the other ones. 20, 30 cent up move is often a big move for Wells. So it could struggle here. It's opening up into this resistance. We'll have to see. If it can get a lift and start getting above the 35, it does open up, though. Okay, folks, that's our show for today, and we'll be back with you tomorrow.